Great, here goes nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna, okay, I'm just gonna start. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. My name is Stacy Smedley. I'm the Executive Director of Building Transparency, a nonprofit whose mission is to provide the open access data and tools necessary to account for embodied carbon emissions. And today I'm here to talk briefly about their role in climate change and climate action. Typically when we talk about things like hurricanes, droughts, extreme heat and forest fires, we call these events natural disasters. But actually the extreme events we are beginning to experience today are man-made disasters caused by us, caused largely by how we consume things. If you think about it, we consume all sorts of things. We consume energy to heat, cool, and light our buildings. We consume gasoline to fuel our cars and the airplanes that transport us around the world. And we make and consume all sorts of other things from single-use plastic water bottles or other plastics to concrete and steel that we use to construct our buildings. And if we think about the making of all of these things, we start to realize that everything that we need to live our daily lives actually emits a great deal of CO2 into the atmosphere and is a direct contributor to the 1.2 degrees of warming that we've already experienced and the trajectory we, we are on to surpass 0.5 degrees in our lifetime. And I think that was more than 20 seconds, but there we go. <laughs> um, it's important that we understand um, where we are in this trajectory. So if we look at this slide, you're seeing now that we are approaching that 1.5 degrees. If we don't do everything we can to negate the emissions in our atmosphere today, uh, we're not going to get to zero in the time that we have left. So as we're beginning to account for these emissions, it's important we understand how uh, carbon emissions are currently accounted for within um, our human lives. And in the framework of scope one, two, and three emissions, it's only been recently that these supply chain emissions of what we purchase and, and what we consume have become a keen focus. These include things that we uh, purchase for uh, buildings and for making products. And now that we are beginning to report on these scope three emissions, uh, we are seeing that these purchase supply chain emissions, these embodied carbon emissions of making everything that we procure, is actually over 80%, and in many cases, over 90% of a company's total emissions spent on an annual basis. Now, putting this into the context of buildings, we know that buildings contribute almost 40% of global CO2 emissions, with over 10% of those emissions being the embodied carbon emissions of all of the materials and construction activities it takes to, to build our built environment and infrastructure. If we begin to visualize those embodied carbon emissions, we can start to make them tangible. So I want you to think about uh, the manufacturing of a project, a product from the extraction of the raw ingredients to the transport of the materials to a manufacturing facility, turning materials into products, transporting them to a construction site, installing them to make a building. And if we visualize all that CO2, we can actually start to focus on reducing it. So I've dug into these emissions. I've begun to use this saying to describe the word. Embodied carbon is like an onion. You peel it back one layer at a time and sometimes you do weep. This accounting is hard, it's not easy, and there are many layers to it. We all need to just dig in and get started, put on those goggles and start to peel back the layers. We're at a place where we can begin to look at carbon intensity of products just like cost. Where we can take the kilogram of CO2 per unit of material and assess products to find the lowest carbon options. And if we do just that, manufacturers across the construction sector of high emitting materials like steel and concrete, for instance, begin to see the need to innovate and decarbonize to be competitive. Now, the data we need, those carbon intensity values, live in third-party verified environmental product declarations, or EPDs, which are essentially environmental nutrition labels for building materials. Just like looking at nutrition labels when you're on a low-carb diet, we can now look at EPDs and put the construction sector on a low-carbon diet. If we all begin to use this data and leverage it to make low carbon design and procurement decisions, we can as a sector truly begin to move the needle on reducing the carbon footprint of the building industry. We need access to the data and the tools to do all of that work. At Building Transparency, we have provided a tool called EC3 to help with this. EC3 is a free open access tool managed by the nonprofit that has digitized 100,000 EPDs into a free open access database, provided that data through an API for anyone to use, and provided a free tool that enables the searching and comparison of product and project level um, accounting of embodied carbon emissions. 
The tool is supported and informed by a cross-section of industry from owners, contractors, architects, engineers, manufacturers, and other key stakeholders, which we're very proud of because embodied carbon accounting and reduction is a team sport that takes everyone across the value chain of construction. Since the tool's public launch in 2019, the growth of users of the tool has surpassed 28,000, and the number of EPDs being produced and included in EC3's database continues to grow exponentially and globally as more people access, ask for this data, and act on it. There is great momentum right now in the private sector to require EPDs and embodied carbon accounting to meet their climate targets and tackle the scope three emissions that account for most of their footprint. Every company on this screen has zero carbon targets by 2030, 2040, 2045, and they include the scope three emissions of everything they purchase and procure, and that includes what they use to make their buildings. At the same time, we are also seeing policy on the public side being proposed and implemented at all scales of government, including city, state, and country level policies in the US. Bike lane policies have been implemented that require EBTs at time of procurement, and there are now incentives in place to incentivize the lowest carbon option to be selected at time of bid. As we continue to see this grow, uh, we have seen really good results. So in Washington state where EBTs have been available and these procurement policies have been in place in the private sector, we've seen an almost 20% reduction in concrete emissions on average from the top three suppliers. 20% in just three, actually two years. If we think about applying that 20% of emissions reduction to concrete globally, we can start to understand what this impact really looks like. Imagine taking uh, millions of cars off the road the year or the equivalent of one trillion trees, a carbon sequestration for a year. That's what would happen if we all just took 20%, uh, the 20% cut of emissions for concrete today, and it's possible. So my last question really to end my brief 20 by 20 is, is what's stopping you? What's stopping you from putting on those goggles, digging into these emissions and taking action? We have the data, we do have the tools now, and now it's just time to do the work. Thank you.